Hey yo, what is up, people? We are back, and we are going to be reacting to another video. Look, y'all know I'm a fan of football. No, I'm not talking about American football. I'm talking about football, football, the real, the real football. I'm talking about soccer, as y'all Americans like to call it. It's so it's football man it's football so we're gonna be talking about why football or why american football lost man so we're gonna see why the nfl isn't even though they make the most money in all sports franchises or whatever the fuck they still aren't globally dominating you know Football still dominates the world, man. So let's check it out, man. Let's check this video out real quick, man. It's a nice little short video. Maybe, um, you know, it'll give us a good reason of why American football lost. And in my opinion, why American football lost. Before we even watch this video, one of the reasons why I don't like fo American football, man, the NFL, is because the fucking commercials, brother. I cannot stand these fucking commercials, bro. Commercial after commercial after commercial, bro. It is a goddamn advertisement, bro. It is what it is. It's an advertising game. That's what it is, man. Every every fucking thing, boom, here's another goddamn ad, ad, another ad, another ad, another fucking commercial, man. Announcement, announcing. That's all it is, bro. And it just, for me, it ruins the, uh, the moment, yo. Because when you're focused on the game, fucking ad. You're focused on the game, fucking ad. An ad, an ad, an ad, an ad, an ad. It's just fucking, it's an ad. It's an advertisement, bro. That's why I don't like football, man. Ads. If they got rid of ads some way, you know, it would be more entertaining for me because I'll be more into the game. Zone in, you know. It won't take me out of the game every fucking five seconds, you know. So let's get it, man. The NFL is the richest sports league in the world. They make... Look at that shit. $17.2 billion. More money than... Jesus Christ, look at the difference. More than the Premier League, bro. It's insane. The NBA, NHL, and the Premier League combined, but they still can't get enough. You so see that? trying to enter new markets. And with such deep marketing pockets, it is no wonder they are able to sell out a stadium abroad. In November 2022, 70,000 fans celebrated the NFL game in Munich. The clip of the German the crowd singing Country Roads went viral. Because it what? The clip of the German crowd singing Country Roads. That's crazy. I mean, I'm pretty sure in person, the game is could be a little bit more exciting because I don't see, I don't think you're, you're like watching commercials every 20 seconds. But when you're watching it on TV, bro, it's just not. I'm pretty sure when you go to a game live in the stadium, pretty sure it's a good feeling. And you will always be in the game, in the zone, because you will be just watching the field all the times, man. You won't have a fucking Snicker ad popping on your screen, or a fucking AutoZone ad, or some shit, you know. The clip of the German crowd singing Country Roads went viral, because it showcased the successful melting of two very passionate fan cultures. Even Tom Brady said it was one of his greatest football moments ever. Wait, 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 wait. The Football League is... Guy has won pretty much everything there is to win in his sport. But as successful as all of this sounds, there is another slightly weird part to the story. One about a bizarre league that involves Donald Trump, an elephant, and how they accidentally helped association football. Welcome to Athletic Interest and how the NFL failed in Europe. Just in American okay. football has one big problem. There is a seven month break between the Super Bowl and the beginning. Holy fuck. A seven month break? Yeah, there it is, bro. Another issue. I mean, what? Seven month break, dude? That's fucking insane, dog. Seven month break? You compare that to fucking football, bro? There's literally like, what, like two months? Or a month or two months, I think, of, of like. It's not even two months because there's, you still gotta do, you know, um, pre games. You gotta do uh, tours. You gotta be on tours and uh, preseason. You know what I'm saying? Preseason. So, of the next season, it's the biggest gap without any matches in all of the U.S. sports. 
So the NFL and TV broadcasters saw an opportunity to host more games in the spring. In the late 80s, they agreed on expanding to Europe. By bringing their product to a new market, the NFL hoped for a lot of new fans and cash. It was a very lucrative time to enter the market. European football was nowhere near as big as it is today, and a huge market was up for grabs. They were also hoping to create a farm league to develop talents. But the project got off to a rough start. It was even difficult to find a name. And the NFL can blame Donald Trump. He had acquired rights to the name International Football League, the preferred choice of the NFL. Trump was not willing to sell, so the NFL went for the World League of American Football. In 1991, the league started to tackle Europe. Funded by the NFL the franchises, hell? which invested $50,000 each to get the World League running. TV broadcasters paid... What the hell did Donald Trump even do with that International Football League? Because I haven't heard anything about that shit. He literally just took out, just took the name or whatever and just didn't even give it back. He could have sold it. He could have literally sold that shit for a good amount of money, bro. If he's not going to use it and just sitting there, he could have just given the name, bro. Back in the 80s or whatever. More than $25 million for the first season and probably none of them ever saw their money again. Although the World League had a promising start. An average of 25,000 people attended the first games, but the hype didn't last long. The TV ratings were miserable, the league made a huge loss, and after the second season, the NFL decided to close it. But giving up was not an option. After two years of brainstorming and rebranding, the World League came back, with a narrower focus on Europe. The NFL then tried some really weird things to gain traction. For example, they decided to let an elephant, an animal neither native in the US nor in Europe, present the league's trophy. What the Tailgate fuck? That's so weird. Attracted more people than the actual games, and the cheerleaders were bigger stars than the players. I bet, the man. The league again, first as NFL Europe League, later as NFL Europa, didn't do much besides proving the lack NFL Europa. of vision by the NFL. The project was burning $30 Ooh. million dollars a year, almost half a billion in total. God so damn. eventually, the NFL pulled the plug. The two reasons why the league was originally founded... Bro, it's just, I don't know, I don't know, man, it's just a lot of people in Europe, bro, it's, it's hard, bro, I just don't think you'll be able to break into Europe, bro, I just don't think it's possible, because football is so big over there, the seasons are long, and it's just, it's just a beautiful game, man, football is just an amazing fucking game, bro, you know, 90 minutes of action, bro, 45 each, half. 90 minutes of just action. Backfired in the long run. There are good examples of NFL players who started their careers in Europe before successfully returning to the US and eventually winning the Super Bowl. Oh, shit. That's what I'm talking about. But overall, it wasn't easy to sell a minor league without the sport's biggest stars. Besides the lack of vision, there was simply a lack of quality. The games were never near the quality of the NFL. And viewers quickly realized that and shifted their focus to watching the real NFL instead of the less exciting European Sister League. It's like trying to convince your friend to watch an MLS game instead of El Clasico. But the NFL learned its lesson. Instead of trying to sell a cheap copy, they started selling the real thing. The same year that the NFL Europa folded forever, their big sister NFL started to play regular season matches abroad. First in London, then in Toronto, Mexico City, and in 2022 in Munich. Yeah, I remember this. I remember when they went to that Azteca. Wow, it was 2017. It feels so fuck, Dude, this shit feels so recent. It wasn't 2017. What? I remember this one right here in Mexico. They ruined the fucking field. But it is what it is. While England, Canada, and Mexico are logical fits in terms of language and geography, Germany is no obvious choice at first sight. It's neither a direct neighbor, nor does it share the language. So why Germany? After the Second World War, Germany was divided into four sectors, including one American. In the following years, more than 200 American military bases were established in Germany. The larger oh, bases especially uh -huh. looked like tiny American cities, with American stores. American oh. school bases especially looked like tiny American cities, with American stores, American schools, and American sports, which attracted curious Germans. People would go over to the bases, looking through the fences, and the American soldiers would bring them in and teach them how to play football. 
It was a cultural exchange that paid off. Over 40 Fisting. years ago, the German Football League was formed as the first of its kind in Europe. When NFL Europa folded in 2007, five of the six competing teams were based in Germany. All this set the groundwork for the biggest American football spectacle so far on German oh, soil. Oh, Alliance Serena. In 2022. The organizers received three million ticket requests, enough to fill the Allianz Arena more than 40 times. A recent study revealed American football as the second most watched sport in Germany, only behind reigning king football. Also thanks to these three guys and their TV show, they popularized American football in Germany, providing expert analysis on TV and online, but also by never getting tired of explaining the game to new audiences. It is a great example of what the NFL got wrong in the first place. American football can hey. be very confusing. Sebastian Vollmer won the Super Bowl, but was quoted that even after two years of playing the game, he didn't know all the rules. So instead of trying to make the game more interesting with elephants and cheerleaders, it's better to focus on explaining the beauty of it to new viewers. Takes more time, but has a higher um, Yeah. The NFL certainly... Yeah, I think that's more interesting, bro. If you learn more about the game, I mean, it's a lot better than just, you know... Yeah, that's actually... They should have done that in the first place, instead of putting some fucking elephants over here and... You know, putting some cheerleaders. Do you know what I'm saying? If people understand the game more, they will enjoy more because that's one of the big reasons why people don't don't like don't like the NFL because they have no idea about the rule books or the rules or anything, you know. And they don't like to um. And there's a lot of people who just don't like to go and research about you know football or just something new. So why don't you just bring all the knowledge about football to them? And where do you do that on TV, man? He understood that point and started promoting flag football as an easy and more I remember oh man I used to play flag football bro I was fucking horrendous at flag football bro more approachable version for kids and fans to get in touch with the game with the Olympics in LA in 2028 and the NFL pushing hard for flag football to become an Olympic sport this strategy could turn out to be a masterstroke the second challenge that I mean flag football sounds fun bro Sounds, to be honest, sounds more fun than getting your head smashed and getting concussions, you know, and uh, having brain damage and The NFL all that. faces in its competition with other sports a lack of international stars. Just think that of what is Yao true. Ming did for the popularity of the NBA in China. But the NFL also has a master plan for that problem. The International Player Pathway Program. The main objective of this program is to increase the pool of talented international players and to ultimately increase the global popularity of American football. It was established in 2017 and has seen success in placing international athletes in NFL practice squads with several players earning promotions to active rosters. It looks like the NFL has learned its lesson. There are already more games confirmed to take place in Germany and there is even That's nice. about That's good, one I mean. franchise permanently to London. Arguably a huge market, but also a city with plenty of very established football clubs already, which brings up a major question. In today's globalized world, it might ultimately come to a battle between American and association football for the hearts and cash of the fans. Both I mean, I wish him the best. <laughs> it's breaking into that London market, bro. It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough trying to break that London market with getting, you know, all the other, you know, London-based football teams in there. Fulham... Brentford, you know, Chelsea, Arsenal, and who else is in there? Crystal Palace. I think Crystal Palace is in there, too. would be well advised to pay attention not only to the money, but also to how to sustainably grow the sports entrusted to them. In the end, the fans will make the vote. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Well, there you go, man. Um, good information there, and some good reasons of why America, American football took forever to be popular and it's still tough over there in london but if you put it in germany i mean you could do it in, uh, in other places in europe that's for sure man but yeah there you go you guys have it american football lost and you already know my reason why i don't watch football commercials commercials anyways let me know what you guys what you think what you guys thought and do you guys think that american football will be able to break fully into a market in other than the US and will it be able to make a completely different like make it 
move a franchise over to a different country i mean i wish him the best but that's gonna be tough they should probably do it somewhere else that is not in london because london is tough but yeah man peace out comment and subscribe and